Hello, welcome back to the food forest. Now, I know some of you like the daily updates and the feel good stuff, but I built this channel on information and ways to help you get going starting your food forest. That's what this video is. So if that's the kind of video you like, sit down, strap in. This is gonna be a bit of a long one, but packed full of information that's gonna help you get going. Let's go. Okay, so you've decided you want a food forest, but like now what? What do you do? Maybe you've taken a PDC and you know about the core ethics of permaculture. Maybe you've even built a herb spiral or a cob pizza oven, but now what? This video is gonna answer that. Now these are things that I would do in my consultations and since I'm not really doing consultations anymore, I thought I would give out some of this information, you know, for free because I love you guys. But if you feel like you get any value out of this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe button down below or joining the members channel and helping support more stuff like this, giving that information out for free to the world so that we can start planting it out and reversing all the damage that we've done to this messed up planet. Why is this important? Because permaculture looks different to everybody. Because you might not want a food forest like mine. You might have different goals in mind. And it's important that we align those to what you actually want. Permaculture looks completely different in a different context with a different person. So what I do here might not even be what you want. So let's figure out what you want first. Okay, number one question, what are your goals for the property? Why are you even watching this video? What got you interested and inspired by permaculture that you decided you want a food forest. Connect with what drew you in. My goals here on this property is less about growing healthy, nutritious food for my family. It's less about saving money. It's actually more about restoring nature and seeing wildlife here. And while economics and health are actually huge factors also, every decision I make is gonna maximize bringing wildlife in before actually producing a ton of food. But if your goal is just to produce a bunch of food, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a different priority. And even though we'll share a love of all three of those things or more, what really matters is that you connect to why you're doing this. Now, even though I said restoring nature is my number one priority, I do want to grow lots of healthy, nutritious, cheap food for my family, my kids, myself. So what are your goals with your food production? In some of my other videos, I've talked about how a good set of priorities is to grow your nutrients and buy your calories. That was entirely rooted in health and money. Because if your goal is to grow healthy, nutritious greens, then you're going to get better stuff in healthy, nutritious soil that you're pumping nutrients in with permaculture practices than, you know, from the box stores. But if your goals are actually more of a survival, self-resilience thing, then growing a bunch of greens is great and you should definitely do that but you really need to be focusing on storing calories, getting your food forest to be providing the bulk of your calories. So it completely flips where you might wanna buy your nutrients and grow your calories or grow both, but make room for those calorie crops, like all the tubers and roots, things like cassava and Jerusalem artichoke and potatoes and sweet potatoes and yams and all of these plants that are gonna give you a huge calorie influx that will keep your family stable in times of crisis. Or maybe your goal is to grow healthy, nutritious fruit that's expensive in the store and it's really fun to just go out and pick amazing tasting fruit like you cannot buy in the store. Okay, the second question, how wild do you want your property to look? And by that I'm not just talking about aesthetics. I grow mine very wild and dense and the reason I do is because my goal and my focus is on attracting wildlife. So I want lots of habitats for birds and squirrels and rabbits and everything that wants to live here. I want to bring that in. I want to create an ecosystem. I plant really densely. But if your goal is slightly different and your goal is just to produce a lot of food, then you might want to have a more organized style of permaculture. It doesn't have to be so tightly packed and dense and crazy that mine is. If you plant really densely, you're going to get a lot of food production per square meter, but your actual harvesting of the food is going to be very difficult. Trust me, I know. The denser you plant, the harder it is to actually get in there. It's a little tight. So this is the permaculture food forest downside, is when you plant really densely, you got pears like an inch over your shoulder and you're picking ah. thorny. <laughs> you might need to stand up. Oh my gosh. Wear protection. How old are you and what are your physical limitations? 
you know, hanging over and bending around a bush and thorns to harvest a pear, you might have a hard time doing that as you get older or if you have other health conditions. Now a big part of this equation is how much money do you have to spend and how much room do you have. This is going to play into your overall density choice as well. Because if you're on a really small space but you want a lot of diversity in your food, then you might trade off putting in a really dense polyculture and understanding that each one is going to give you slightly less food and it's probably going to cost you a little bit more money. But if economics is really your main concern, then you might want to spread your plants out a little bit to make sure that each plant is getting all the sun it can possibly get. Permaculture doesn't all have to be done like this. It doesn't all have to look like my system. It needs to actually match your goals for how you want to use your land. Okay, the next big question is what can you even grow in your area? You can go to the local farmers markets throughout the year on the year before you're going to get started and find out what everyone else is growing. That'll kind of tell you what things will do well here. I think a mistake that a lot of new people make when they're starting a food forest is they try to grow everything. They try to be a collector instead of actually focusing on the really core things that you enjoy eating, you want to eat and that grow well. It's really good if you can get a high proportion of the plants in your food forest to be aligned in those areas. And then in the 10% remaining, you know, grow your medlars or whatever strange weird fruit you want to grow, grow that. But don't just start there. Start with what you like and what grows well where you are. How do you want to walk around and use your land? That's my swale. How much work do you want to do or money do you want to spend to create things like earthworks to capture, store, and hold water on your land before you even get started? Now don't underestimate how much of both of those things those cost, work and money. Installing swales if you don't have access to heavy equipment is a lot of digging and a lot of time. If you do have access to heavy equipment and you have a lot of land, it can be a lot of money. That being said, it's usually less money in the long term because you'll save it by using less water and having healthier plants and getting more crops. But it's a lot of upfront money that you might be spending, so figure that out combined with how much you're going to be spending on your trees. Get out there and walk in your land and figure out how you want to walk around your land. What structures do you want to place? There's the swales and the earthworks, but what about physical structures? Do you want a greenhouse at some point? Do you want chickens? Do you want goats? What do you want? What structures do you need to fulfill those things? And this is really, really going to help you with your design. Because actually one of the hardest things to design is just a blank canvas. It's hard to just take someone who's got a square of grass in their backyard and design something. It's easier if you start putting in some of those structures, figure out where you want those things to go, and then you can start designing around those constraints. Constraints lead to a more elaborate and elegant design. So figure out how you want to walk through your land, figure out how you want to use your land, start putting some of those things in place on, you know, grid paper or in MS paint or whatever. It doesn't have to be high tech. Just start plotting some of those things down and start getting a kind of a rough sketch of how you want to use that land. And then once you have that rough sketch, I want you to go out and observe your land for at least, ideally at least a year so you're seeing all four seasons, but you know, at least a month so you get that soak time. Our subconscious mind is such a powerful tool and even when we're sleeping or working on other things, it's solving problems for us in the background. It's really important that you engage your subconscious mind when you're designing your food for us. So think about what you want to do and then let it soak. And as you're observing your land, look at a couple key factors. First is, how is sun hitting your land? How will that change based on the structures that you put in? This is really important. Figure out where your best sun locations are. Second, think about your water. How does water hit your land, stay or flow out of your land? Find areas where it's flowing out of your land and stop it and hold it there. Find areas high on your land where lots of water is flowing in where you can slow it down and you can ideally store it in some kind of holding device like a swale or a pond. If you have a smaller property, don't be afraid to use little micro swales and micro ponds. You can do this in very, very small, miniature, downscaled versions of themselves. In fact, in my annual gardens, I'll dig in a little swale that is going to capture and hold a little bit of water in a rainy event. So 
that's sun and water. And the third thing is life. How does nature and life use your land? This has been a really good thing about me kind of working with Christina Lynn, the wildlife biologist. I like a lot of her concepts of thinking about wildlife corridors through your actual gardens and land. You actually do want to have areas for habitat for predators of the prey that are going to be pests in your garden. And you want to have areas where beneficial creatures can come in and hide from pests. To figure all that out, you have to get outside, you have to have a plan and concept in your mind, and then you have to actually observe your land. But in order to do that, you have to answer the first two questions of this video. Okay, the last and most important question you gotta ask yourself is, what's taking you so long? Get out there and get started. Start going through and observing your land. Start getting a plan together, figure out what you wanna eat, figure out what your site goals are, and then just start going. And to help you feel better about getting started, I'm gonna talk about really the only two major mistakes that people can make when they're starting a food forest. Remember, we're not necessarily setting things in stone. Everything can be fixed. The two main things that cannot be fixed are where the structure's going on your property, you know, how you wanna walk and use your land, where are those things going? That's really important. Sort that out, figure it out. The second big thing that people mess up on is how to actually plant a tree. If you're going to get started in this you want your plants to grow so do them right and learn how to plant a tree i have a video on how to plant a tree properly make sure you check that out in the link that i just posted i'll also post it in the video description below make sure those trees are planted well make sure your stuff's mulched well i have a sheet mulching guide if you're new to this and you haven't seen that guide check that sheet mulching guide out how to start a food forest the biggest things that you can mess up that's going to make your life miserable, like a type 1 error, is going to be if you design and hold your water incorrectly, especially if you have a lot of catchment area coming in. You need to learn about your catchment area, the size of your swales, and you have to dig in emergency overflows. Ideally, maybe two, so that you have redundancy. That's the engineer in me. You have redundancy for if one fails. The second biggest thing that you can make a huge mistake on is you know where your stuff is gonna go, your structures. Make sure you get your permits, make sure you call before you dig anything. Make sure you figure all that kind of stuff out because if you go and build a huge barn or uh, a giant greenhouse and then someone calls bylaw on you and you can't do that, you have to tear it down, that's a lot of money. Don't mess that up. Figure out if you're allowed to do something and then get all the permits in place. Figure out if that's where you want something learn how to do that properly. Those are an area where you can really mess up. And then figure out where the really big cornerstone plants are gonna go. This has a lot to do with how you wanna walk and use your land. Figure out where you want that shade. If you put a giant tree on the south side of your property in the Northern Hemisphere, you're gonna, it's gonna do really well at the beginning and it's gonna shade everything else out. If you put a giant tree in an area where you wanna have access and be able to move, and then later on, it makes it so that you can't get a trailer through or a truck or whatever you need to get through to that area. That's a big mistake because now you gotta cut the tree down and you've just lost maybe 10 years down the road. So figure out where those big anchor point elements are gonna go in your design. Everything else, just don't worry about it and just get planting. So just to recap all these things, your first question you should ask is, why are you here? Why do you like permaculture? What got you inspired to do this? That's what your goal is. It's what your goal for your life is, for your property, for are you building for nature? Are you building food for yourself? If you're building food for yourself in any capacity, what's your goal with your food? Are you building nutrients? Are you building uh, calorie crops? Are you trying to outweigh the zombie apocalypse? Are you trying to eat healthier and be healthier? Or are you trying to save money? Could be all those things. Figure out the weighting of all those three things. Number two, how wild do you want this to look? That's gonna tie in with a bunch of sub questions. Could have broken this up into like eight questions, but what are your economics? How much do you want this to cost? How do you wanna be able to use your property? You might have to really think about designing in ease of harvest and ease of access. Think about where structures go, how you wanna walk around your land, where the sun aspects are, where the water catchment is, how do these energy sources come in and out of your land, including wildlife? How does that come in and out of your land? Get out there and observe your land and figure out, you know, maybe a couple draft sketches and then let each of those soak and let that subconscious mind solve those problems for you. 
you're going to come up with a much more elegant design if you start thinking about some of these questions then set the anchor points get those big structures in think about the type 1 errors do you want to store water learn about how to do that do you want a greenhouse do you want chickens where are those structures going think about all of that kind of stuff and how you want to use your land and then ask yourself why am i not started yet so go turn the video off get started go build your food forest